Hello, for this video we're looking to determine the centroid of the shape shown below. So we've got a cone that's got a 4 inch diameter at the base, a uh, 4 inch height, uh, and today we're going to be using integra the integration technique to find the centroid of this shape. Um, so <clears throat> with the centroid of this shape, um, I'm going to need to find the uh, X centroid, the Y centroid, and the Z centroid. Uh, and two of these are actually pretty easy, so I can use symmetry to my advantage. Uh, if I look in the x direction, um, if I've got something that's symmetrical, so I think about uh, the left half of this cone and the right half, or sorry, left half of the cone, right half of the cone, uh, and they're a mirror, mirror image of one another. Um, so when it's a mirror image like that, um, I can go ahead and say x bar is equal to zero. So the x centroid is going to be equal to zero or x coordinate of the centroid, and I can do the same thing for y. So y is coming out of the board or back into the board. Uh, and if I look at this cone, the front half of this cone is going to be a mirror image of the back half of the cone. Uh, so when that's true, uh, I know that my y bar value is equal to zero. Uh, where I don't have symmetry and what I'm going to need to find is going to be uh, the z position of my centroid. Uh, so no matter how I cut this in the z direction, um, the top half of the cone is not going to be a mirror image of the bottom half of the cone. Uh, this is where we differ, so I need to go ahead and calculate this. Um, so for this, let me clear a little bit of space here. Uh, I know that my z bar value uh, is going to be equal to the integral of dv, so that's the change in volume times z over the overall volume of my shape. So I can figure out volume of a cone, that's not too hard. Uh, z is just the z coordinate, I'm going to multiply that into an equation later. Uh, but what I need to find is this dv. So dv is describing the change in volume as I move up the z axis. So I can imagine, going back to my original diagram, uh, as I go from z equals zero and I'm going up, I'm looking for the change in volume uh, with respect to z. Uh, and the change in volume is going to be the area at any given cross section. So at a specific value of z, the area at that specific value of z is just going to be a circle. So if I go up part way, I can imagine I've got this circle here, that's my cross section. Um, so dv is going to be that area. And the area of a circle, so if I go down here, dv is going to be the area of a circle, or one half pi, or sorry, not one half, just pi r squared. So that's going to be the area of my circle. Um, but I need to do this in terms of z. So I'm looking to find what is the radius uh, at any given value of z. So I need to find, you know, what is the radius. Uh, so, <clears throat> going back to my diagram, I can find out the radius according to that. So I know when z equals zero, when I'm down here at the base, uh, my radius, my diameter is four inches, so my radius is going to be two inches. So when z equals zero, my radius is two inches. The other thing I know, another point I can look at is up here at the top. So by the time I get up to z equals 4 inches, my radius is 0. I've come to a point. Um, so <clears throat> at that point, uh, z equals 4, r equals 0. Uh, I can find an equation for my radius. So my radius turns out to be negative 1 half times z plus 2. Uh, and this is the equation for the line describing that. Um, so <clears throat> when z equals 0, I've got negative 1 half times 0 plus 2. My radius is 2. When I've got uh, z equals 4, negative 1 half times 4 plus 2 equals 0. My radius is 0. That's the other point I was looking at. All right, so now I've got this. I can plug this whole thing back into my equation. And I'm going to have z bar and I'm taking the integral uh, from the bottom to the top. So looking in the z direction, I'm going from z equals 0 up to z equals 4. Let me give myself a little more space. 
space here. Z bar equals the integral from Z equals zero to Z equals four of dV, and dV is gonna be equal to pi times R squared. R is this right here, so negative one half times Z plus two. And that whole thing is squared, and I multiply this by z, which comes from up there. So let me put a little crosshatch on the z so we can tell z's and 2's apart. And I divide this whole thing by the volume of a cone. Uh, so the volume of a cone is going to be equal to um, pi r squared uh, times <clears throat> pi r squared times h over 3. So pi, uh, my radius in this case, is just going to be the radius of the cone, so that's 2 inches, times 2 squared, times h, which is 4 inches for my cone. Times 4 over 3. Alright, so I've got this whole thing. I'm going to simplify uh, the top a little bit. Um, and so, <clears throat> rearranging the, the top, I can rearrange this. I'm going to pull the pi outside because that's a constant. So I'm going to have pi times the integral from 0 to 4. Uh, and this ends up being equal to um, 1 fourth times z cubed minus 2 times z squared plus 4 times z. And I divide that by my uh, volume. Uh, so pi times 2 squared times 4 divided by 3. I get an overall volume of 5.33 uh, and the units were inches, so inches cubed. All right. So now I need to keep going with this z formula here. So if I go ahead and I take the integral, uh, I'm going to take the integral of this function here. That's going to be equal to, so this is z bar is equal to, um, evaluated from 0 to 4. And I've got 16, 1 over 16 times z to the 4th minus 2 thirds times z to the third plus two times z squared. Z, add a cross hash in there. Uh, so I'm evaluating that from zero to four and I'm dividing that whole thing by my volume of 5.33 inches cubed. All right, so if I evaluate this, uh, I'm going to plug in 4 uh, each time I see z, c, z. So 1 16th times 4 to the 4th minus 2 thirds times 4 to the 3rd plus 2 times 4 squared. Uh, I end up getting z bar equals um, 5.33 over my original volume, which is 5. 0.33. So z bar ends up being equal to 1, units being inches. So through all this work, I've proven that the um, z coordinate for the centroid uh, is 1 inch. And that means, going back to my original diagram, um, I know uh, earlier I said x bar and y bar were both equal to 0. So the centroid coordinate, let me erase this circle in here, uh, is going to be x equals 0, y equals 0, z equals 1 inch. So if I go up the z-axis by 1 inch, that is going to be the centroid coordinate for my cone. Uh, we can check this if we look at the table of uh, common centroids, and we can see that uh, this matches up with what we would expect from that table. So with that, I've done the calculations to find my centroid. I've solved my problem. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.